Welcome back to the Cross It Games podcast. I'm your host, Chase Ingham, with Dylan Malitsky. I want to say it not just to the West Coast Classic, but of Wadapalooza. Now I get to say Wadapalooza Miami and Wadapalooza SoCal. You got, man, what, <laughs> are you sure you needed a third thing to work on? <laughs> uh, you know what? A passion project for sure. Mm. The, the, the team, when the opportunity came about to host the west coast classic in the semifinal on the on the western part of north america man it was a no-brainer yes actually more of a hell yes than a yes 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 uh, well i said hell yes for a couple of reasons that we're going to touch on today and one of them is that not only is the west coast classic back but correct me if I'm wrong when you guys first came out with this this was meant to be at the del mar fairgrounds a couple years ago when, when, when did you guys first pull out the uh, the west coast classic yeah, we had announced it formally, I think, in 2018, uh, okay. 2019, excuse me, and we were going right. to host it in Del Mar in 2020. I mean, when I tell you we were this close, like everything was done. It was. It I was, remember. I was like, I'm coming. <laughs> it might have been less than a month before the event. Yeah. No, no, I know for a fact it was. We hosted Wadapalooza in January, and then mm -hmm. we had our team, like one of the members of our team, uh, Anna Maria, our production, our lead, our production lead. She was the one going to lead load in. She had her bags packed. She brought them to the office that day, and then all flights were grounded. So oh, man. we had to take a, a, a big break. And then we brought it to life in 21 mm -hmm. um, with the, the the first, I guess it was a, a sanctional at that time. or Maybe it was yeah. considered a semifinal. Yeah. When did uh, I think, yeah. Was it semifinals then? Or was it? I think it was. I think it was. Yeah. I don't know, man. All I know is that it moved to Vegas and it was like, oh no, we didn't get the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Like, don't worry. Not only is it back, but it is coming back to one of the most infamous you had to be there places in the history of cross it competition and you guys are coming back to the tennis stadium in carson california how why was this on the table like what walk me through how we even got here yeah i mean i could walk back really far where the, <laughs> where the conversation first started with with uh with crossfit and just trying to identify like how was this season going to come together in general and uh and what were the the opportunities like uh, but we, yeah, just to start there, we were approached by CrossFit. Hey, you know, if you're interested in, in hosting a semifinal, first of all, are you, you know, mm -hmm. I want to circle back with the team. The answer was yes. You know, and, and then the, the, with that, the exercise of trying to find a location began and I traveled around a little bit. Uh, actually we were considering heavily going back to Vegas actually. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. We were, we really liked uh, Orleans Arena. We thought it was, a, you know, I think there were a lot of things about it, the indoor environment, the aesthetic. Like It, it was it, a cool it, spot, man. A, a great, I looked like a great size and spectator friendly. Just every, looked like everybody was on top of each other. It looked awesome. Yeah, it checked a lot of the boxes. Um, it had a lot of the, the, the things that we would have liked. But ultimately, Vegas this time of year, after going there to a few other arenas, um, it's just a tough time because of graduations. A lot of those indoor venues, because oh, doing an yeah. event outdoors there in Vegas that time of year would be would be rough, as it was back then uh, when we did it in 21. So then the search began in, in, in California. And so saw a few venues out there. Definitely had my focus on Carson <laughs> because of the history and and the brand of West Coast Classic is built upon the nostalgia of the sport. Right. And once and I've I've site visited that spot a few times because we actually looked even originally when we were between hosting it in Del Mar or in, in Carson. Oh, were you? Yeah, yeah, back okay. in 2020. Um, but just stepping in there and knowing that it was an opportunity, a possibility of doing so, it uh it just felt right. Like overlooking from the that corner viewpoint of the of the tennis stadium itself, it just it just clicked in my heart, in my brain, and bringing it back to the team, it made sense as well. And, and now we're really excited to restore Southern California to its former glory with a, with a big event like this. Well, and like you said, that was the basis of why you called it the West Coast Classic, because at the time we were missing a classic CrossFit event where it all began as far as the CrossFit methodology and the CrossFit games that started in Aromas, California, that eventually moved to where you will be, guys will be coming to at the end of May here, between May 24th and 26th, back to Carson, California. But that's what you guys wanted to bring. You wanted to bring an elite level competition back to the place of where it all began as a tip of the cap that those that paved the way from the beginning, which another part, I remember the programming the first year were all repeats or modernized repeats of past regional and Cross the games event in the first West Coast Classic. Yeah, that was a ton of intentionality there. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing more difficult than trying to piece together <laughs> old events. Dude, isn't it so hard to do? 
so much harder than I thought it would be coming. Uh, you, you would think that conceptualizing programming from scratch would be difficult. And it is, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. And the testing is, is far more nuanced, but trying to make all the little things fit because there's so many overlapping movements. Um, right. You're like, I love this event. It has snatches and muscle ups. And you're like, and these other five events that I would love to do also have one of those movements. Now, what do I do? Exactly. Exactly. It made for a fun experience for sure. It's, it's, it's unlike anything I had ever programmed before, but with that, I'm far uh, happier now that we're just told, Hey, this is what you get. This is how it's going to work. Um, CrossFit taking the, the lead and the charge on programming is, uh, is no sweat off our back. We'll, we'll touch on that a little bit is that, okay, all the, for the second year in a row, as it used to be up until 2018, before the sanctional events came in 2019, is that standardized programming across the board, you are the, the host venue, the host director, the, the, the host event for the semifinal events that CrossFit will be programming. Is that a... Is that a load off as far as like, hey, this one, I mean, think of like one of the major things about the event is tied up in the programming, the equipment, the the space, the things that you got to get. Is it nice just having that given to you and then you just work on making sure it's the best host fa site facility? 1,000%. It, <laughs> it, is a, it is a massive load off off of our team's shoulders. The experience of, of standing on the sideline after you had done extensive testing and now seeing it play out in actuality, like we've talked about at tier Wadapalooza in the past, there's an immense pressure on, is this going to land the exact way that we had intended through this long arduous mm. process of trying to make sure that it's as perfect as possible in this scenario. That's not, it's not that it's not our, our problem. It's just, you know, on somebody else's shoulders and in, in, in CrossFit. So yeah, it makes for a, a simpler execution and it allows us to focus on the other things that are super important to producing a world-class experience, which as you mentioned, are the spectator experience, the athlete's experience outside of the actual competition. Um, so yeah, ultimately though, it uh, doesn't mean it's any necessarily less, it's definitely less work in some regards. Mm -hmm. but we're taking that time that we would have spent there and just investing it in other areas. I mean, as a spectator or, or person coming to watch, I feel like that's exactly what I need to hear is that, okay, not only do I get to watch some cool things, but there could be some things that are set in place that you guys are putting more energy to, to the athlete experience, the fan experience as it comes to back to Carson, California. While we're talking, I'm going to just play some, some old highlights of the good old days. Um, I'm starting with the 2010. I mean, look at these graphics. This is the 2010 CrossFit Games highlight. So if you guys have never been, this is going to be the biggest you should have been there moment, and you actually get a second chance to be there, which is why I'm so excited that it's coming down. But uh, this is the 2010 CrossFit Games highlights. <laughs> and as we roll through that, we'll talk. Oh, I weird. All right. Hey, watch this really quick. You ready? The very beginning. I just saw this. Before they start, that guy in the middle on the bar, <laughs> the, the days of Kalipa days. Hey, look. Hey. <laughs> Followed up by what a ridiculous transition. They have me struggle busting, uh, struggle busting on some muscle ups, and they go right to Rich Froning afterwards, <laughs> which is a good, right? That was a good uh, five seconds. But this is a 2010 Cross Games where they just had a little rig in the middle of the tennis stadium. There's probably like 57 people watching Friday night in Carson, California. The first time we ever went there was 2010. And the memories that started there started this year in 2010 because it was actually supposed to be in Aromas that year, but I think mm. the fire department shut it down. Right? It was getting too big for the ranch mm. and they did a last minute move here to Carson. And the best part, I remember this, is everybody was like trashing this decision so bad it's like really? how we oh dude they were trashing it trashing the move this like it's so corporate <laughs> it's like you're getting away from our roots and then lo and behold what we didn't know at the time in 2010 was yeah, little the, did magic, they know. the magic of the tennis stadium and you guys are bringing it back and i just want people to understand is like if you've seen these videos, if you've watched these athletes on the competition floor and you keep hearing about this on broadcasts and podcasts and people talking about what was and, and how fun it, it could have been, like you get another opportunity, dude. And you guys are bringing it to them. Yeah, that, that's exactly what we set out to do. You know, that a lot of the nostalgia that we talk about with West Coast Classic, I mean, just from my own experience, there's still nothing that has replicated Friday or Saturday night under the lights mm -hmm. in the tennis stadium. I'm, I'm sorry. You know, the, in, in Madison, it was super cool. Um, you know, but the environment, I, I was just speaking with someone actually, a, a, a former or still an elite athlete, but uh, somebody that's 
you know, very emblematic with Southern California CrossFit history that, that we're, we're looking to partner up with is in some ways with the event, but talking about like those moments just before the final heat, mm. when they would have the national anthem sung and then a flyover happens and then the beep. And oh, the beep. dude. The, yes. The, 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 the goosebumps I would get. And I was a floor announcer at that time have been impossible to replicate or emulate. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping though, and, and our team is, is, is hoping for as well, that we will be able to replicate some of those feels that everyone came to know and love, uh, when we head back in May. That's awesome. And I got to talk to Wilson pack last week, obviously they're putting on the syndicate crown, which is the East semifinal. You guys will be the West semifinal for North America. And for them that they get to have a community event that they'll have on site. Um, you guys will have something a little bit different. You're talking about, you know, fan experience and, and things of that nature. Is there anything you can let us know about things you guys are working on or looking forward to for those that are coming to spectate there for the semifinal? Um, yeah, there's plenty. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to have a seminar stage. So we're going to have some subject matter experts speaking on a, on a variety of topics. That's one. Um, and then two, you know, we're going to be filling in the gaps. I don't want to let like the full cat out of the bag, sure. but as far as the schedule is concerned, there's going to be quite a bit of time between workouts and we're going to leverage it to the fullest by really having folks that have represented CrossFit history for a long time out there on the floor, not necessarily maybe doing any actual work themselves, but speaking to some of their favorite memories and mm-hmm. such. So just really, again, trying to play up that, that notion of that this is where some of the, the best moments in CrossFit history uh, lived. So outside of that, obviously like vendor village that will go around the perimeter of the, the tennis stadium oh, floor. Man. And, you know, this is sort of separate and cool, but on Saturday of, of the event, there's actually an LA Galaxy game in the soccer stadium. Oh, really? That people can double dip and if they want to come to that and then stick around for a little bit of the soccer oh, game. Oh, that's game. awesome. Yeah, super cool. Yeah, it'll be it'll be different. There's a rugby game on Sunday, but, uh, but yeah, it'll be super cool. So when we're looking at Carson is like, okay, we have the, the programming there. It's going to fit on this floor plan in it when, it when it comes to this. And it's for the, I would say for the casual fan, right? When they, just being there, like there's just a different energy in Carson. Mm-hmm. Right? And what's going to be nice is that I assume these will be three-day competitions. So you're going to get that Friday night light feel in Carson that only a select few of people have got to have. And not since, t- like I think it's been since 2016 since we've been under the lights in Carson. That's nuts. Isn't it? Cr- eight years have passed. It doesn't feel like it. Every, every time I try to recall the last time the games took place in Carson, for some reason, I always like err towards 2018, 2019, because I think we just miss it so much that it seems so much more recent. Those memories are still like fresh, um, like visceral in our minds. Um, yeah, it's uh, I miss it, man. I certainly miss it. And I think the community does. And that's why we're bringing it back. What are some of the things you're looking forward to, to the most um, just hosting this semifinal again for the, uh, for the cross game season. Yeah. I think you've already hit the nail on the head with it, Chase. The, the biggest one is just that, you know, while there were a lot of people that did get to experience what Carson felt like from a, a competitive venue mm-hmm. and why it was different, it's really tough to articulate. It's one of those things you've got to experience for yourself. So again, like for me, it's about trying to replicate that feeling, that nostalgia, and then secondly, for those that haven't been able to experience it, because they're like, well, what, what could be so different about being in, you know, in the, in the Coliseum in Madison or what mm-hmm. is this like in arena? Ultimately, I think this will uh, provide some context to that when they actually step on, on, uh, on site. The second thing, too, is that I know there's a lot of folks that maybe didn't get a chance to buy a ticket to the CrossFit Games. Maybe some will become available mm-hmm. as we get closer. But the fact that now they're sold out, like we, we want the West Coast Classic to be essentially – the local CrossFit games for people that aren't able to make a, a destination vacation out of it to, to Dallas, Fort Worth. So um, that's the other thing is like, that was the other cool thing, right? That we don't talk about enough, which is, it's not just about that environment in the tennis stadium, but the fact that people would make the CrossFit games for kids that are out of school, they, the families would make it their, their holiday vacation over the summer. Mm-hmm. Like it's surrounded by so many cool beachside cities. Oh so yeah. To, to, to be able to like get two for the price of one, go there for the weekend to watch CrossFit. But then at the end of the day, also be able to spend Monday, which is Memorial day, a holiday and Tuesday hanging out on the beach. Like that's also what I'm looking forward to is providing that experience to families and people just looking to make this a vacation. 
What I like the most about Carson for being just a host facility for across the competition, obviously it's been the, it was the games from 2010 to 2016, is that we do have these conversations like fan experience, spectator area, vendors, how are we going to make this as experience? And what I thought was coolest is like, we didn't really need that much there for whatever reason. Yeah. It, didn't need, it didn't need to be flashy. There was no, nothing sexy about it. It was just the way it was built and how it was set up, and it just took care of itself. Mm -hmm. And now that we're bringing, which is kind of funny, is that we're just bringing a semifinal competition floor right there in the middle, and we're going to go from there. But, I mean, it, from the athlete standpoint, I mean, if I, if I heard about this before the game started, I'm moving to a West Coast state for, for <laughs> like to come here. It's like, you mean I get to go here? But like, I can qualify and come back to it? And now we have the semifinal... I would say the ravenous semifinal vibe matched in with a games competition floor. Yep. Even for that's the athletes, how excited I would be for that. That's exactly it. Yeah, I would agree. And I'm trying to think of when you look through the roster of the folks that are like top 10, top 20, who is going to get a chance to return to this competition floor? Like the, the, the Brent Fikowski's of the world, I think his first year competing. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. He like some yeah. of them it's, it's returning. Um, and I'm very interested to hear what their take is once they go through the weekend, if it, if it, uh, if it met their expectations and we're, we're certainly going to gun for it. Um, but I agree with, you know, people would crit used to criticize Carson and LA in general of being a small fish in a big pond. Yeah. Um, but ultimately it did have something for everybody, which was different than, you know, going to Madison, for example, not, not saying that, that, uh, they're just different. I was going to say not one is necessarily better than another. Yeah. Um, they, they were just different. But with, with with Carson, you could go and spend time in Manhattan Beach. You could go into downtown yeah. LA. You could go to Hollywood. It was all very accessible. And so even if it's not a true takeover of the city, you have that experience when you're in the venue. And then outside of that, you get to enjoy whatever it is that you like to enjoy um, in and around the Southern California area. Uh, my, it's going to be like if – you know, West Coast Classic, when this happens, again, May 24th through 26th is, is when you guys will be taking place. Is that my grandmother lives in Manhattan Beach. And one of my favorite mm -hmm. things during the games was to basically like fly into LA, put my bag in the hotel, and then drive up and see her because she's just living in Manhattan Beach and I get to go say hi to her. So that'll be something cool if I uh, get to come out there and watch what you guys got going on. It's just uh, go say hi to grandma again. <laughs> But just the surrounding area, too, like you said, the beach towns. I mean, it's not just Manhattan Beach, but you've got Hermosa next door. Um, I mean, how far is Huntington? Not far. 30, 35, 40 minutes. But again, it's all, you know, SoCal traffic is uh, tough to, to predict. That's true. So. It's, uh, it's kind of like going east and west in Dallas, uh, Dallas Texas. It's just, it's, it's not, a, it, two miles isn't two miles, right? We know two, we, we do miles by minutes. Like, okay, it's exactly. 50 minutes per mile when we talk about that, but you'll, you'll get to see um, other things that are coming up for you guys as well as not only are you having the West coast classic in that area, but I just said Huntington beach and you know, Wadapalooza. September. Yep. Tier Waza SoCal. We'll be here before we know it. So we got to get the, you know, that with the first one with, with West coast classic three months later, will be that but those, those events are so vastly different than each other. Right. Like we go from yeah. one venue, which is really fixed in a lot of ways. You've got built in seating, you know, a, a historic competition floor. That's really pretty turnkey. And then with what we're doing in Huntington beach is we're, we're building something from scratch, like what we do in Miami. Um, and that's a full fledged community competition. We'll have a, you know, similar number of athletes to what we have in Miami. And then, a a really cool elite competition, which we're not at Liberty yet to share. That'll be coming out here shortly. Um, but really excited to share that when we do get to that point. For, for the West coast is that we're looking at it. And we talked about the, the fan experience is one and we touched on the athlete one, but you being there, like you've emceed the CrossFit games on the tennis stadium floor in Carson, California. We've all been a part of it in a, in some way, shape or form. I see Mike in, in the comments listening with us is that, You've got to see the experience. You've got to sit in the stands and watch. But talk more about the athlete experiences. Like, yes, making semifinals is a big deal, but why is it? What is it about where you guys get to do this that the athletes should be looking forward to as well? Yeah, it's just being able to sort of almost, I don't, I don't want to say, uh, being able to step out on that floor has mm. such meaning to our sport, even just in looking at the clips that you're playing right now. I mean, this one's on, on the beach, obviously not far from the, uh, the old stub hub center, dignity health sports park today, but, you know, being able to, to 
operate in the shadows, compete in the shadows of some of the biggest legends of our mm. sport. Talk about needing inspiration or motivation, knowing what types of moments, and I'm sure a lot of these guys and girls have been following the sport since those days. It really is going to feel special for them. And if they were needing any sort of ability to dig deep within themselves to perform over that weekend, they're going to have it. Um, and also, as something I've mentioned, that community has really been without anything super special in a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, Pasadena is not close by. So, you know, I'm, there, but, but there is a dense CrossFit affiliate population and fans of the sport in that area that have just been thirsty, yearning for something like this to come back. So yeah. the environment that they're going to be walking into because of the nostalgia, because of the underserved competitive fan that lives in that area they're going to be in for something truly, truly special. I, I really think that's what they're going to be walking into. How much um, freedom do you guys get to do things just outside of the competition? Obviously, we, we said earlier, it's like the programming set, the schedule in a certain aspect. Is that is that something you guys get to play with? And what type of freedoms outside of the, obviously, the mainstay competition do you guys have? Yeah, I mean... I think, as I've mentioned, this being just largely an elite comp, we had the opportunity, like Syndicate does, to host a community event, but we decided not to take the attention away from those seeking to qualify for the, the CrossFit Games. Mm -hmm. So we made it all about the athletes. Um, but in reality, CrossFit's been really supportive, and they've, they've said from the very jump, like, we're partnering with events, only one if they know that they can be successful, and we're going to do everything in our power to make you successful. And with that comes a lot of freedom and flexibility okay. to make this event what you want it to be. And I think, Chase, you're talking to a lot of other event organizers. You know this. Like the French Throwdown has been in existence forever. Yep. And it is a huge community competition with the semifinal aspect tied into it. So they have full flexibility from my uh, understanding to do what they want. From yeah. our side, pretty much anything and everything you see outside of the competition floor is us, 100%. Okay. Uh, so full full and total flexibility. How much do you lean on the other event organizers, as you said, like French Throwdown, Wilson Pack, and, and the others that are, are going to be putting on these events over the course of these couple of weeks for semifinals? How much do you guys get together, maybe share ideas or concepts and, and you know best practices? Sure. Yeah. So we haven't had like a, a meeting of the minds, if you will. But what I will say is I'm very close with Wilson. He's a dear friend of mine for very many years. I've emceed his events probably going back 10 years now. Um, some of his community events back in the day. And so I'm always probably annoyingly. So I'd probably like the like, <laughs> like stop asking me questions. And, but, they, you know, they go both ways. Right. Like, I think we, we both have our strengths. Um, and so being able just to bounce something off of him, even though our events are so there, there's a lot of similarity. But there's also a lot of differences. Right. Doing an event in Knoxville, mm -hmm. Tennessee is completely juxtaposed with what we do, sure. what we're doing in Carson, California, going back to a historical destination in a suburb of LA. So Which isn't a bad thing. I think that's the cool thing is you get these flavors and feels, even though it's like, look, the mainstay, the whatever the number of events are and what they are, that's the that's the singular entity that links all of these semifinals. But I love you get a little of that. And that's what I loved about sanctionals back in the day, was you got your own flavor. Just yep. put on it. Now you guys could do your own programming. So we have some continuity between that as far as the programming, but you guys get to add your own personal flair and flavor and, and tone to the competition. Yeah. I mean, I, outside of like the French throwdown and I know each of the events have their own brand. Like I don't think there's a brand as strong as the West coast classic in terms of like what we represent. Like I think it's very clear what we represent. We represent old school, nostalgic CrossFit competition. Um, and that's what we're bringing to light. And the destination speaks to it. You know, you're going to see a lot of like the the entertainment and stuff going around. Like I mentioned to you before, with some of the the legends being part of this in a, in a major way. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff that we're promoting, it's all based upon that. Okay, um, and that's because that's that's what I was brought up in within the the community when it was these videos you're seeing here. Those are those are the moments that I remember. Those are the the glory days, if you will, from from my perspective, and I'm sure a lot of other folks' perspective. And I think it's important for folks that have been part of that to relive it, but then also folks that have not been part to be able to see it firsthand. And, and so, yeah, we're excited to be able to bring it back to those folks. Well, we talk about it a lot as everybody does this when they look back on old memories is that the, 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 the fondest ones rise to the top is that we romanticize about this era so much. Mm -hmm. And I say we romanticize it about it so much because as you said, this is where a lot of diehard fans fell in love with CrossFit. 
and with the CrossFit Games. And this arena, this tennis stadium that will be in Carson, California, was the hub for all of those emotions and all of those connections. And yeah, I think for the the demographic of fans that were around then or got to watch it on TV have an opportunity to now go back in person and either rekindle that, you know, romanticized feeling of what it was like to be a part of that era of the Cross of Games. That's another opportunity. But I think even more so is that everyone may be watching these highlights for the first time or heard about this, that, and the other, or you ha- like that you had to be there. That's the worst thing about that phrase is that you had to be there. It's like, well, I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it's tough to And read. now you do. And I think that's going to be the most fun part is because it doesn't just, we're not just scratching that itch for those that wish it was back in those days that we talk about, but we're also giving those that didn't get to be a part of it an opportunity too. And I think bringing both of those together, you're going to have such a cool atmosphere and just energy in that tennis stadium coming in the end of May. Yeah. I'm I'm actually genuinely smiling as I'm watching, listening to you talk about it, Jason, and watching some of these videos. Cause <laughs> some of these are my favorite memories of the sport. I, I, uh, you know, I just watched the, the, the hand over hand sled pull between the, mm. the race between, uh, Josh Bridges and Rich Froning. Mm. Bush pull, tennis stadium, nighttime yeah. event, Bridges versus Froning. It was one of my favorite events alive and in person. It was so basic. It's like pulling sleds and doing handstand pushups, but like what transpired was just iconic that and and, uh and then there was another clip there which was an event that was just again something that had never been done before seen but what a cool idea when it was released like obviously the programming team at crossfit every year comes up with some new cool and exciting movements workouts formats but the muscle up biathlon oh dude that was what, what that was a mind blowing moment for everybody. It was just so unique and different, but what a cool concept for creating an event that rewards those that are going to go for broke and just have amazing gymnastics, um, you know, uh, stamina, just, it, it, that was so dang cool. And th- there was a number of those moments. You were always so intrigued by what would come out of the hopper. What would Dave announce? Or like some of those moments where you'd walk into the, the, the tennis stadium, and there was this massive monstrosity oh, yeah. of a rig that stretched the Your entire 2013 world. legless or that was uh, the legless event. Him. Yep. They're just God. all those really cool moments that are wow in my mind that like every time I think about them, it brings this smile, this feeling in my chest that I've been looking for for a really long time. And I'm hoping that we're able to bring that feeling back to the people that come to the West Coast Classic. Well, and we talked about earlier is that I don't even think you have to bring anything. You just have to provide the opportunity. And I think everything else will take care of itself. Backing up a little bit timeline wise is when the announcement was made that independent events will now be hosting these semifinals. Was this something you had already been in talks with CrossFit or heard about that was happening prior to, or did you hear it and it was like, Hey, listen, let's bring the West coast back and, and let's just, let's just jump on this and be able to provide another opportunity for this to come back to life. You know, I don't have the best memory in the order of operations, but what I can say is that initially we had gone into this season, if you will, with a full focus on the tier Wadapalooza, Miami and tier Wadapalooza SoCal. Like we, we were all systems go. Let's, let's help launch this, this event on the opposite coasts. Um, and you know, an event that we've been now producing for 12 years, but then when it did come to light that, Hey, it looks like CrossFit's not going to be executing their own semifinals on their own. Although they're, they're, they're looking to partner with events. Mm-hmm. I did have some conversations with folks internal at CrossFit, but actually they were more just like, Hey, if you guys, if you all need any help, just let us know. Um, if there's an opportunity, we'd be happy to discuss it. Um, and then it became a no brainer once we got into talks and started to realize like what types of low, what types of flexibility they were going to provide, what kind of support they would provide. They've made it, they made it a really easy hell. Yes. Okay. Nice Imam photo. What's Imam up, photo. What's up, Dylan? Can't wait to see what you guys get together at the West coast. I can't either. I hope the, to host the, you there too. The, the more I watch these things, the, the more I'm excited about, um, as we get to that. But, um, when you, well, let's see, it's, we're, gosh, it's about to be April. Open is done. We're looking towards the quarterfinals. Obviously, yep. then we'll start to know, uh, see those rosters get filled out of who will be qualifying for the semifinal for the North America West. 
And if, if I was an athlete, I was like, I've already got some extra juice to, to, to qualify for this now knowing where it's going to be. And I find that so interesting is that not only do you want to just make semifinals, but I would say rarely ever is a location of a semifinal an incentive to want to make it. But I feel like you have the only one I can think about is a destination location to compete, not just what you're competing for. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, that's that should definitely be enough of an incentive. And there we got Bruce Wayne saying it'll be his first trip. So that means he was not able to attend back in the day. There it is. Um, yeah, man, it's gonna be it's gonna be super cool. I think the other cool thing to think about, which made this venue super unique. I know there's North Park, but having the the the, the main venue be something that's outdoors. There's really no other semis. I know Tori and his outdoors but it has that that sunshade which actually is probably mm -hmm. you know welcomed but we're gonna have a lot of folks there crossfitters with their shirts off you know, oh the, yeah dude yeah. i just i totally forgot about that that was, for the first time in a long time we're gonna have a whole stadium of just shirtless people out there just soaking in the sun and watching some people throw down gosh those are good oh i miss those days Bring your sunscreen, but party beach vibes for sure. May shouldn't be too bad compared to what, what August and July brought back in the day. It was, it was always, Oh, you know, it's always great. You it's know, not, May is going to be perfect. Yeah. May is like the, everyone's, you know, obviously I'm, I'm based on the East coast, but, um, everyone, I've been out there a ton, but everyone said May is like the best weather. How, how far along are you guys in the planning process? Is it more of just like now it's the little details and nuances, or you still got a lot of big things to bring to the table? Yeah, not, not big things. Right. I think, when you compare it to our other events, which are built literally from scratch, like we're building right. it from the ground up, this we are under contract with our venue. Tickets are on sale. We're now booking travel and accommodations for folks. We're securing things like the LED and um, you know designing mm -hmm. signage for the venue, which is always a cool process. And we love the playing with the West Coast Classic brand because it does have such a cool color palette and, uh, and the look and feels really nice. But, um, but beyond that, no, at this point, it's kind of, I would say it's like 80%, 80-20. We're at 80% of the way there. The, okay. the, the last 20% is uh, like within the next three to four weeks, we'll be done everything. And it'll be just about continuing to promote and getting as many folks there as possible to create as magical of an experience for the athletes as possible, right? If, if that venue feels a quarter or half full, well, it's not going to produce the environment that we want. So that's really going to be the, the, the crux of our focus in a month's time. And that's not just for the fans. It's for the athletes too. It's, yeah. a, it's a give and take environment of how they perform in the arena of which they're given and packing that out. I mean, we're just looking at the videos right now of what the stands, I mean, they had to build in extra stands each year for the CrossFit games, but it's just, like I said, the feel, it's such an intimate setting. It, everyone's so close. It's built of everybody feels like they're on top of you, which is in the, you, you wouldn't think for an outdoor arena, it would get as loud would get but the, the like i remember push pull at the end of that deafening just <sighs> deafening roar at, at the yep. end of that one well let me ask you chase too when you talk about th those moments like that one do you have a moment in particular that stands out to you and you might have shared this on your podcast forgive me if you have but it, it doesn't need to be in the tennis stadium generally speaking during the carson era was there a moment that stands out to you as being one of the most iconic? As I see athletes doing uh, uh, ring handstand push-ups after doing a muscle battle. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, fall. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that one. So I will, I'll give you two. And okay. I'll give you two. I'll give you a personal one because I was a very small blip on the radar oh, of being okay. a part of the Carson era of, of athletes. And the personal one is... Coming out of the tunnel, Friday night, it, sun was setting, the lights were on, and I got to come out of a tunnel with someone announcing my name that I had made the CrossFit Games, and I got to look into the stands and see my dad. Like mm. that was that was a big one. That was, that, there's there's a lot to that story, and I'll stop there before I get a little too. That makes my know, heart happy Jason. into it. Yeah. But like you know, my 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 whole family was there. Obviously, I told you it's like my grandmother, like my gym, and uh, but but just like there there is a there is a father son athlete generational bond thing and a box I got to check that I've been wanting to check my entire I would say youth. Uh, life when it when it came to that, not to uh, be too intimate or detailed no, there, but 
Um, my favorite moment of the CrossFit Games was, uh, we've already mentioned this a couple times, but I'll just go through my experience there, was 2014, push-pull. Rich is losing the CrossFit Games in what would appear to be you know, a tumultuous start to his final year as an individual. And at the time, I was on the broadcast team, and I was broadcasting the team competition. So what, and you remember this room, when we're in the tennis stadium, if we're thinking north and south, on the south end was where the broadcast booth was, the broadcast equipment was, and then an open room where the broadcasters and MCs got to sit. We basically had, I mean, we, we got it. We got it good in Carson. We basically had an open suite, and the front glass doors opened side to side, and the sound would just rip into that room. And we thought it was loud in the seats. It was 10 times as loud in that booth. But I got to sit there and watch all the individual competition while you know Bill Grundler and Sean Woodland were stuck watching a TV screen and calling the action. So I just got to sit there with my legs out of the window because we had that little uh, windowsill where we just, yep. or, you know, we take notes or whatever, just okay. sitting there open and just watching this race on the men's side in the final event, I think, what was it, Saturday night, and Josh is pulling. Rich, and it's just like sled, 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 all the way through, and just the the loudest sound, um, raw emotion. I mean, what, what more just like barbaric way to finish an event with just like two dudes pulling on a weight? Right, it wasn't muscle ups. It was just grunt, like barbaric, just mono e mono all the way through, and then Josh finishing and jumping up on the podium and doing his Josh oh, thing oh, and shit. Rich, right. But like it was the like the testosterone levels for everybody just raised a few. I should have tried to wonder at max deadlift after that moment. Honestly, I <laughs> he would have PR'd. actually PR'd something. But um, from a fan perspective, that was just me. I was just. I was just a fan. I just got to sit there with my legs out the window, sitting in the best seat in the house with no responsibilities other than just loving what I got to witness. And that was, that's my, that's my top Carson moment as a fan. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure you're not the yeah. only one that has that same sentiment. Obviously not in the exact but same. But everybody has their own, you right. know? Like, okay. Well, what's yours? Dang. Put me on the spot. I thought I'd be able to throw it to you, but not. Oh, no, bro. You can't just put me on the spot and I can't bounce it back to you. We're playing, we're right. playing memory pickleball, pickleball right now. Yeah, man. I think, you know, talking about from the, like the work perspective, there was a year where I was assigned to be the, like the, the call out guy in addition to being the, you know, the actual, uh, you know, back and forth with someone else on the floor. But there's a video that, cause I don't remember it exactly, but I remember being really nervous before every final heat. Dave would be by my side. I think this year it was the year of his cornrow, so it was a little bit earlier than that. Ooh, but he was yeah. Excited. And you had to stick to like really, really like you had four seconds to announce each athlete, and they would be, be sending them out every four seconds. And that intro before the very final heat of men at the CrossFit Games in 2016, and I don't even remember how the heat went down in that moment of me. This is me like more professionally within within CrossFit and announcing each and every one of them, but starting by basically getting the entire crowd on their feet saying like, everyone stand up right now. Give these men the respect they deserve. They're the top 10 men here at the 20, you know, so it was just that, that whole kind of moment and, uh, and introducing them one at a time was one of my most prideful moments. And I just went into that heat with such freaking excitement. Um, so that was it professionally that, that introduction yeah. of, all, of all 10 of those guys and girls for that matter. But as far as like a competition moment, um, I go back to what I was mentioning. It was just before the final heat of legless with men and they were wow. all on the starting mats. And I remember the DJ before the national anthem playing this one song that just, you could feel the bass and everybody. Oh, yes. I remember that building. song. It was a Kanye song. I remember it. And, and I've, I've tried to see it because nothing has quite got me more hyped than that. Um, and then they did the national anthem. They had the flyover, and it started. And that was just another seesaw battle where Again, and, I, and again, I don't even remember how it ended, but just the excitement of that event yes. to close out Friday. Hendren, Troyan, Froning, maybe Pancheck, all there. It was 2013 legless, and they were all doing that you go, I go thing. Yep. And it forced you to really think about it as an athlete, right? Because yeah. you could waste a ton of energy trying to jump up a little too soon and failing on those legless. But I love the way they had that laid out, too, from a storytelling perspective. Barbell, 
rig, barbell, rig, barbell, rig. Oh, and yeah. I mean, a lot of work for the road crew, but boy, they <laughs> yeah. tell like an exciting visual story. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, here's a question from Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Talking about the tennis stadium. Is it comparable to Tierwaza Bayfront Park? Or Bayside, as I'm assuming what he's talking about. Yeah, he, well, Bayfront's the venue name. So, like, if he's comparing, like, straight-up venues, like, very different. Absolutely not yeah. the same. Uh, I feel like it's an unfair comparison. Yeah, they're just different. One's it's just different. Yeah. I, I would say this is, like, um, Bayside is, especially with the barge this year, my goodness, one, like, top tier. Top tier, coolest destination, locations, atmospheres, what you guys can pull off there and what the what that's like, the that is a, in a, a uh, arena of itself. Tennis stadium. We think ten, uh, I'll say this: if you think about crossing games, tennis stadium, coliseum, right? Like tennis stadium is just league of their own. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing's matched. And I'm, I'm interested to see if Dickey's Arena will come close. You know, like that's yeah. that's going to be, and and at least you know I would expect Dickey's to be like the coliseum. But I, I, I hear know that Dickies has more capacity, right? I think there's more yeah, capacity. it'll be bigger than the Coliseum in Madison. Maybe it'll be even more loud and and uh, and a more exciting environment. But that outdoor venue, it just seems like you know, in general, because of a lot of reasons. I mean, we we learned the hard way, learned the hard way, but we're gonna keep doing what we do. Yeah, is, uh, the weather just plays such a factor, and it seems like there's a desire to. And you've had come, you know, you've had some. Uh, some shows in which you've discussed and debated this, like the, the desire to have events outside or inside. Um, the risk you play, but the reward, man, when it works, it's just like, I would say, I, I would say this is CrossFit competitions, just the nature of the sport are made to be outside, right? Agreed. Outdoor venues, outdoor competitions, outside the box events and programming. It, that's just, that's the roots, man. That's just our roots. And so when, when it all comes together, that's why it's so amazing when it does. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I couldn't be more excited. And I hope the community rallies around it as well. I hope we can get the entire SoCal community out there. I think, you know, the timing of semis and uh, quarters, excuse me, in relation to semis, I think is just a little bit of a challenge to, if you're like waiting to see, okay, who's going to, like, who's going to qualify? Is it worth it to go? Mm -hmm. there's going to be the same, a lot of the same cast of characters that you've come to know and love. And we're certainly going to play that up as well. Um, but yeah, just, you know, almost wish that we, it's tough. The season's just, it's, it's condensed. There's so much going on that it's tough. There's a lot. It, it's packed in tight, but listen, you don't need to wait for your friend or family member or coach to qualify. You're going to get the best athletes in North America. They're going to be there in the place. Like I would say, <laughs> No disrespect to the athletes, but the tennis stadium itself is a character that you would want to go see regardless who's competing there um, in person. So pack it out. Get there. Affiliate owners, get your members. Get the people there. Go to the westcoastclassic.com. That's when you guys can go and pur purchase tickets. Uh, do you guys have multiple day ones or, or, or options for, for fans? Yeah. So no, j just GA. So you're not going to be able to pick your specific seat necessarily. Buy a weekend. Buy a single day. The pricing goes up, I think, in another three weeks or so. So might as well get it now if you're going to get it at all. Um, you know, affiliate owners in Southern California, look out for messages from us because we're also ah. offering some cool opportunities for you all to be part in a, in a in a way and make sure your members want to come out and support. So if you did not get a message from us, send us one at uh, on Insta at the West Coast Classic dot, uh, at West Coast Classic, excuse me, and we'll make sure to get back to you on that. I like this. You got single day passes, either day one, day two, or day three, or a package that has three day passes. And, and as you said earlier, to get in touch with you guys and what you have going on, you do have the West Coast Classic on Instagram. So hit them up in the DMs with whatever questions you have. If you're not getting those emails and you just want to see what's going on, I would say immediately start following this Instagram handle because Dylan just showed me a promo video for what's to come and you do not want to miss it. But Dylan... I'm so excited what you guys got coming on or, or going on for the West Coast Classic. I'm pumped that you're behind all of this because of everything you've done in the space from top to bottom, from MC to competition director. Uh, it's in good hands. That, that's all I know. So I want to thank you for your time. I'm so pumped for the West Coast Classic, and I can't wait to see who's going to be joining you guys in Carson, California this year. Thanks, Chase. We're just as pumped, and thanks for having me on. Excited to see everybody in California here in just a couple months.
All right, team, go hit up the westcoastclassic.com, get your tickets, get your butts in the seats, and get yourself an opportunity to relive the magical moments under the